This is the word that the Lord has given me today. And I think it's extremely important because right now our times are so volatile uh, between parties, Democrat, Republicans. There is this major call um, in our government or in the in the in our country right now for an uprising or a revolution against President Trump. And I am not I don't want to get into all the political um, nonsense that's going on. It's basically a good versus evil right now. But as much as I did not like President Trump before he took office, I didn't like him. Um, I was blind at that time, I believe. I, I, I had my reasons, and I don't think that he's some holy, holier-than-thou perfect person. But I do believe that the Lord has shown me um, with discernment that right now the Holy Spirit is leading President Trump. And anyone who comes against President Trump at this moment is crazy because greater is he that is in me and greater is he that is in President Trump right now and greater is he that is leading him than he that is in this world. And he that is in this world would like to do nothing more than to divide our country, to divide this world even further than it is and destroy it, destroy Israel, destroy God's people. That is what... All these people that are rising up and saying, you know, that President Trump has done this to these children and President Trump did this and President Trump did that. Go back and read. Go back and listen to the prophecies that were given by modern day prophets like Kim Clement and like Mark Taylor, because those were given years ago. Those were given to these men, these men of God these messages from the Lord about this president. And we are supposed to pray for our leaders and ask that God holds their heart in his hand and that he leads them and he guides them. And God is a powerful God. You don't have to be some perfect person for God to use you. I can attest to that because I am in no way, shape or form a perfect person, nor have I ever been. And I want to share these verses with you because right now I think as believers, we need to really hold, hold tight to um, being led by the Spirit. And this is what the Lord is telling me. So I want to read these to you. Galatians 5, 16 through 26. So I say, let the Holy Spirit guide your lives. Then you won't be doing what your sinful nature craves. The sinful nature wants to do evil, which is just the opposite of what the Spirit wants. And the Spirit gives us desires that are opposite of what the sinful nature desires. These two forces are constantly fighting each other, so you are not free to carry out your good intentions. But when you are directed by the Spirit, you are not under obligation to the law of Moses. When you follow the desires of your sinful nature, the results are very clear. Sexual immorality, impurity, lustful pleasures, adultery, sorcery, hostility, quarreling, jealousy, outbursts of anger, selfish ambitions, dissension, division, envy, drunkenness, wild parties, and other sins like these. Let me tell you again, as I have before, that anyone living that sort of life will not inherit the kingdom of God. But the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against these things. Those who belong to Jesus Christ have nailed the passion and desires of their sinful nature to the cross and crucified them there. Since we are living by the Spirit, let us follow the Spirit's leading in every part of our lives. Let us not become conceited or provoke one another or be jealous of one another. I cannot express enough how important it is to realize I have so many friends and family and I was this person myself. I was this person just a few months ago. I claimed to know the Lord. I claimed to be a Christian. I claimed to be walking with him and praying daily. 
and and I did to a certain degree, but I didn't know what even real belief was, I don't think, at that time. I still had all the doubt in the world. I still lived in my sinful nature. I was still conceited. I was still quarreling. I was still jealous. I still had outbursts of anger. I had selfish ambitions. There was division. Um, I was drunk sometimes. I was wild partying it out, okay? And I still claimed, oh, and let's not forget sexually immoral. I was all of those things and still claiming to be a child of God. I was completely fooling myself. And so many people out there are completely fooling themselves and think that they are okay because when they got went to the altar when they were five years old or 10 years old or 12 years old and, and for whatever reason went to the altar and gave their life to Jesus, so many people are truly believing that they're okay even though they are doing all these things that the Bible says. Anyone living that sort of life will not inherit the kingdom of God. The fruit of your life will determine whether or not you are truly saved. So you have to look and say, okay, are, am I living this type of lifestyle where I'm sexually immoral? I'm sleeping around. I'm not married and I'm living with my boyfriend, but it's okay because God loves us and we know God. No, we have got, if, if we're drunk all the time, you know, if we're drinking all the time, going to parties all the time, we have to understand that is not the fruit of the spirit. That is not the fruit. That is the fruit from the enemy. That is proof. The fruit that you produce in your life, the fruit of how you are acting out there in this world and the way that you are, that shows who is in control of your life and who you're worshiping. And it's hard to hear, but it's the truth. The thing is that's so great is that the Lord has given us the ability to be covered for all those sins. Don't condemn yourself because you've done wrong. Instead, just humble yourself and let the Lord know, I cannot stop these sinful things without you. I need you, God. I need you in my life. I need you to be there and help me get through this. Help me to quit drinking. Help me to quit feeling so tempted to sleep with whoever. You know, you have to go to God on your knees and pray and say, I cannot do this without you, God. In Jesus' name, I cannot do this without you. I promise you, if you do that, if you pray that, He will help you. He will take those desires. I never in a million years would have ever thought that some of the desires I have on a regular basis would be completely taken away just because I asked, just because I was humble enough to get on my knees and ask. And that is exactly what happened because I'm not a perfect person and he's working in me daily and I'm dying to my flesh every single day. I still have to have that internal struggle. It says right there in the Bible that you will struggle. These two forces are constantly fighting each other every single day. So you're not free to carry out your good intentions. Those forces are fighting within you and they're fighting all around you to keep you from doing the things you intend to do for the Lord. So we have to stay focused. We have to stay guarded. We have to put on the whole armor of God every single day. We have to die to our flesh. You know, it is a sacrifice. Do you think it was not painful for Jesus to be beaten and ridiculed and nailed to a cross when it says we pick up our cross and we carry it every day it's not supposed to feel good it's not supposed to be easy but by doing that we are securing ourselves for eternal life we are protecting ourselves from burning 
and being separated from God for eternity. I don't know what else I could say to drive that point home. The great news is there is a way out of this hot mess that we're in with all of our sinful nature and sinful past. Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me, John 14, 6. If you have not been saved or if you are unsure if you've been saved, there's a simple way to do this. The ABCs of salvation. Admit that you're a sinner. Believe in Jesus, that God, is, that God sent His only Son. He chose to die for us. And commit yourself to a life of following Jesus and serving others. In Jesus' name, amen.